start with verse number 21. I'm going to read just, just four verses before I pray. Uh, keep your Bibles handy. Amen. Keep your Bibles handy today. There's a lot of scripture I'd like to go through. This has been a, a subject that's been weighing on my heart for, for a while. And, and um, especially in this day, as crazy as this day is getting, um, this is a message that we need to hear. It's a message that needs to go out through the internet. This is a message that ought to prompt and burden the hearts of the saved folk to make sure it's getting out. Amen. And so once you found your place there, John chapter number 8, verse 21, would you please stand us honor the word of God together today. If you're physically able, we'll stand together as I read just these four verses before I pray. The Bible says in John chapter 8, starting in verse number 21, Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he saith, whither I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you take this very sobering text, very somber text, and please work in the hearts of the dear people that are here today. Father, I pray that there's somebody amongst us that's, that's here that does not know Jesus as Savior. Let today be the day where they see their need for him. Holy Spirit of God, please be convicting their heart about the, the truth that we're sinners, that we're separated from God, and that we need a Savior. Convince them that Jesus is the way. Help them to see their need to trust him as their personal Savior. Lord, I pray for those here that are saved, those that have trusted Christ as Savior. I beg you, dear God, that you work on our hearts to develop a greater burden for those that are lost. We have, been, we have been entrusted with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have been given the responsibility of sharing that gospel with the lost and dying people. And Father, we get so busy sometimes, we neglect that responsibility. And so I pray that you de just develop a burden in our hearts, help this message to break our hearts and to tender our hearts uh, that we would be more faithful in your will for our lives. And Lord, we just want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In verse 21 and also verse 24 of our text, the Savior, Jesus, our Savior, speaks, I think, uh, the greatest tragedy that could possibly happen to a human being. And that's the loss of their soul. The, the, the eternal loss of their soul. The worst tragedy that could happen to you or to I or to our loved ones or to really any of Adam's race is not knowing the Son of God as Savior, not knowing Jesus as our personal Savior, their personal Savior, uh, missing heaven and spending eternity separated from God in that place called hell. When Jesus said in our text here, whither I go, ye cannot come, he was, he, he, he was speaking of that 
uh, of that eternal separation of the lost soul from that uh, from the pure and the, the, the compassionate Savior who was willing to die for the sins of the world on that old rugged cross. He was speaking about that great gulf fix that we find in Luke chapter 16 and verse 21. That great gulf between heaven and hell where no human can ever cross in and of themselves. Think about the words of our Savior there. He says, I go my way. And ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Now listen, there's a lot, there's some, some great difficulties that you and I are called upon and have to deal with on this, uh, on this side of eternity. There's some, some difficulties and, and sometimes some tragedies that we have to deal with uh, in this world. But really, uh, when you think about it, the loss of health, uh, the loss of prosperity, the loss of our wealth, the loss of material things... Uh, in this life, uh, they absolutely pale in comparison to the tragic loss of a human soul. When I think about hell, and that's why it's been a burden in my heart, when I think about hell, when I think about the souls of men being separated from God for all eternity, it breaks my heart. If you're lost today, I wish I could make a decision for you, but I can't. If you're lost today, I beg you, please pay attention to the scripture today. Please pay attention to the message today. Please pay attention to what I believe the Lord's led me to tell you today. If you're saved today, if you're a born again believer, if you by faith accepted Jesus to be your personal savior, then please allow the message to increase your burden for the loss. Allow the message to break your heart. Don't harden your heart today. Allow it to break your heart. We get so busy in this day and we forget about lost souls. We may hand out a couple of gospel tracts uh, here and there so we can kind of say when we get to church, hey, you know, I've been witnessing through this week. I've been being a, but are we witnessing enough? Listen, if hell is for real and your brother and sister in Christ, according to scripture, it is. If hell is for real and we have the, 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 the truth that keeps souls from hell and God has given us the responsibility to get that truth to a lost and dying people, listen, this message ought to break your heart. It breaks my heart. In preparation of this message, my heart was broken because I know I'm not the soul winner I ought to be. I, I'll admit to you today, I wish I could stand up here and say, listen, you just follow my example to a T. I'm the greatest soul winner in the church. You just follow after me, and I promise you'll be right with God in the area of soul winning. I wish I could testify that before you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, but i just got to be honest with you today. I've got room to grow in the area of my burden for lost souls. One of the greatest hindrances in salvation today, probably second, probably only to the lack of soul winner, soul winners, as people thinking they're good enough. There's a lot of folks out there who think they're good enough. In, in the text that we're looking at here, listen, Jesus is talking to good people. Morally decent people, right? They, they, were, they were lost, yet they were very religious. They were faithful to their uh, rituals, the religious rituals. They were faithful to their ceremonies. They were all taught, they were, they were, they were taught well in, in, in all the mosaic teachings, all the mosaic law, they, they, they knew it. They were, most of them, the vast majority of those that Jesus was speaking to that day were, were born of Abraham, known as God's chosen people. However, like millions, millions today, they were substituting religion for regeneration. They had traded ritual for righteousness, amen? They, 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 they had uh, replaced human tradition for, for, uh, in, in the place of divine commandment. They were lost. And, and even worse than that, they were so blind. They were lost, but they were so blind. And they were so dug in to their unscriptural religion that even Jesus testified that there was no hope for them. <coughs> the Apostle Paul describes these sort of individuals in Romans chapter 10, verse 3. The Bible says, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Listen, no wonder the Savior said, He shall die in your sins. No wonder He had to tell them, Whether I go, ye cannot come. 
Listen, they were so close to Christ. He was the Messiah. He was the one that was about to go to the cross of Calvary and, and take their sin upon him and die in their stead. He was, he was about to make the payment for sin for their lives. And yet they were lost in their sins. They had heard him, uh, they had heard him uh, forgive the sins of that adulterous woman when he, told, when he told her, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. They had heard him uh, offer uh, heaven's uh, light for, for earth's uh, darkness there in John chapter 8, verse 12. That last part of there was, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. They had heard those testimonies. Amen. He, he, he had uh, come to them from, uh, the, 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 from, from the Father, our Heavenly Father, who loved the world. He, he, he gave his only begotten Son. He had wonderfully worked miracles. And has spoken words of grace. Amen. Words of grace that offered a, just a, a clear presentation, a clear witness to his deity and who he was. He had offered them freedom from slavery. John chapter 8, verse 36, a little later on in our text, the Bible says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. They always say, I, I always, I, every time I read that verse, I think of, this, I think of this, this, this dear brother used to say this. He said, I'm glad when I got saved, I wasn't set free, I was made free. Hey. Amen. A lot of times they say, oh, the, 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 you know the truth and the truth will set you free. I've heard it in songs. Listen, when I hear that in a song, I replace that with make you free. I didn't get set free to come back and get all, get all entrapped in sin again. Amen. I got made free. I'm a brand new creature in Jesus Christ. And listen, we're made free from slavery. They had, they had access. They had great access to the way, the truth, and the life. And yet they refused to receive him. And so, so as, as, as Jesus saw them or viewed them or was able to see in their, them and their, 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 their hatred towards him, in their, in their sin, uh, in their depravity, he goes on, he proclaims, you shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Listen, there are... A lot of folks out there that are good moral people. I was just reading my devotions yesterday. It's talking about it's something that we don't like to consider, something that we certainly don't enjoy. Uh, but you know, there's folks that'll go that'll go a whole lifetime faithful in the church and still end up in hell. Faithful, sweet individuals, moral people, good people. These were good people. These were decent people. These were, these were overall, I'm sure there's a few wicked ones in there, but overall, fairly moral people. Many, even, even in our day, many, there's a lot of folks out there that, that, listen, they classify themselves as Christians. They say, I'm a Christian. I go to church. And, 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 and though they're, they're that close to him, just like these in John chapter number 8, and although they're that close to them, they're still lost in their sin because they have not repented of their sins and turned to Jesus by faith. But why won't they trust him? Why in the world wouldn't, wouldn't anybody, why, why, would, why would somebody not put their faith and their trust in, in Christ as their Savior? Why, why would they not trust him, the one who knew no sin, that became sin for all of mankind? Why would we not trust Jesus is a Savior. Why do they refuse the Son of God as Savior? Why do they refuse Him as the one who paid for their sin debt? Why is it that millions of our generation today, why is it that they're dying in sin, forever cut off from Christ, forever cut off from heaven? Why? By God's grace, I'd like to answer those questions with scriptures. I preached on this thought for just a little bit. Dying in your sins. Dying in sins. In your son. I, listen, I, the first thing I, I think of here uh, is that, you know, people today, people are dying in their sins today, first of all, because of unbelief. People are dying in their sins today. The first thing we can look at here in Scripture, they are dying in their sins today because of unbelief. Jesus said unto those that were listening to him preach that day, a li little later on there in John chapter 8, we're still there in John 8. You can look down to verse number 45. The Bible says there, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Listen, unbelief, unbelief is probably the most wicked of sins. It is certainly the most fatal of all sins. One preacher said about unbelief, he said, it locks heaven's doors 
locks heaven's door and opens the wretched, wretched chasms of hell. I, I didn't do that justice. It locks heaven's door and opens the wretched chasms of hell. Listen, un unbelief, you think about this, unbelief has, has, has killed millions. Unbelief has, has sent multitudes to a devil's hell. Unbelief drove Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. Unbelief drowned multitudes beneath the, 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 the flood waters, the judgment waters there in Noah's day. Unbelief, listen, unbelief kept Israel out of Canaan for 40 years. Unbelief hindered the fulfillment of God's wonders, wonderful promises to his people. And the word of God teaches us very clear, if we're going to be saved, if we're going to have our sins washed away, if we're going to enjoy eternal life, we are only saved by believing. I love Acts chapter 16, verse 31, that jailer, we know the story of the jailer, and he comes and, 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 and he asks us, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He was looking for some, uh, some uh, uh, work to do, something he had to do, some sort of ritual maybe to perform. He wanted to know what to do to be saved. And listen, it wasn't a do, it was faith. He said, uh, they, they said, uh, the Bible says in verse 31 there, Acts 16, 31, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Amen. Romans chapter nine or Romans chapter ten verses nine and ten. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse ten says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Listen, it is absolutely impossible today for you to be saved. Resting and trusting in your own good works, in your own good deeds. It is impossible to be saved today without faith uh, in, in, in the glorious person and the finished work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. We are saved unto eternity. Uh, we are saved unto eternal life. We are saved from our sins by believing. And can I tell you, we are condemned unto eternal death. By unbelief. He that, the Bible says in John 3, 18, says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he saith not, uh, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Listen, God is all-powerful. Amen. He's omnipotent. We say that. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent God. He's the almighty God. But he will not save the lost man or the lost woman who refuses to believe. In that, that wonderful, that unspeakable gift. God will not, will not perform that wonderful work of regeneration. will not wash the sin away from that lost person, that lost, uh, lost of, of mankind. Uh, he will not uh, uh, do that work of, uh, of regeneration in that human heart until there is a willingness to believe. Dear, dear soul, dear lost person out there, dear sir, dear ma'am, dear young person that's out there without Christ today, please believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that Jesus died on the cross uh, uh, for your sin. Believe that the, the, the just uh, for the unjust uh, died on that cross for you and I to have eternal life. Believe uh, that God laid all your sin upon him there uh, at that old rugged cross of Calvary. Believe that he rose victorious from death, hell, and the grave. Uh, that you might have eternal life. Amen. Listen, I want you to know Satan wants to keep you lost today. And Satan uses many subtle tricks to keep you from believing today. He's at work actively and probably more so in this crazy day than he's ever been before. He uses the, the, the false gospel of works. Amen. There's a lot of folks out there today that are convinced that they're going to heaven because they're a good person today. That is a lie from the devil. The Bible says none are righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Scripture teaches us that there is absolutely nothing good enough in us to get to glory in and of ourselves. 
It's not about being a good person. It's not about a church membership. It's not about church attendance. It's not about a water baptism that merits eternity with our Lord. Amen. The, the devil encourages many to seek uh, that uh, and, and follow a feeling uh, rather than exercising faith and trust in what God's word says. Hey, listen, I tell our young, but my young people, my kids, uh, when they are having questions or they're wondering about salvation, salvation is not about a feeling. I don't, I, listen, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to have peace tonight uh, uh, because I'm not going to go to bed and pillow my head tonight uh, with a feeling of salvation. I'm going to have faith in the word of God. It says, by trusting Jesus Christ as Savior, my sins are washed away. Hey. God's word is what offers the assurance. Amen. There's a lot of folks out there going by a feeling. Well, I've had this experience. Well, I've had this experience. I've had this experience. I felt this. I felt that. Listen, all of those things that, that does not mean that you're saved if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I want to enjoy a confidence today that I want you to enjoy a confidence today. Listen, that, that, that you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. John chapter 6, verse 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me. I will in no wise cast out. I will in no wise cast out. Hey, can I tell you today, I don't care where you're from. I don't care what sort of wickedness you've got yourself into. Uh, we might not be able to fully understand it. We might not. You might be so wicked, we can't under, We can't accept you personally. But I'll tell you who, who will accept you today. There's not a, there's not, you, you cannot go too far. You can't be too wicked. Uh, if you're willing to believe on Jesus Christ, your sins can be forgiven. And you can have eternal life. That's just point one. Number two, people are dying in their sins today. They're dying because of procrastination. Right? There's a lot of folks, a lot of times we find in Scripture, we see God, he's urging mankind to make decisions regarding their faith. I understand there's some things in our life that we, tend, we ought to, we ought to uh, not make hasty decisions. I understand that. Amen? Buying a house. Some the big, big expenses like that, amen, getting married, those things kind of, those take, you can take your time with that, amen. All right, girls, all boys have cooties, but be very careful, amen, especially amen. You, you teenage girls, right? All boys have cooties, you just be careful, amen, and uh, you, gotta, you gotta watch out for them, man, you gotta, you gotta be careful there. Uh, listen, that, those things, you gotta take time, amen, that's okay, I understand, but there's, listen, when, when it comes to faith in the Lord, when it comes to decisions regarding God and his plans for your life, listen, he, makes, he, he, call, he urges us to make, uh, make uh, decisions regarding our faith. We, uh, we uh, see the urgency in Exodus chapter 12 when God was uh, instructing, uh, giving instruction there regarding to the Passover uh, lamb. Amen. Of course, it's a wonderful picture, the Old Testament picture of Jesus, the Lamb of God. But in Exodus chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible says, And thus shall ye eat it with all your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, uh, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Amen. His people, they were there in bondage there in Egypt. Uh, amen. That picture of being lost uh, and in the world. Uh, amen. And they, they weren't to delay uh, in the eating. Amen. God commanded them to make haste. In that eating uh, of that Passover lamb. Hey, can I tell you, God, I believe, is still urging those that are in the bondage of their sin today to make haste to be saved. To make haste to accept Christ uh, as their personal Savior. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 18, the Bible, he, the Bible tells us, he says, Come now and let us reason together. The end of that verse, it says, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. Hey, listen, if you're lost today, if you're lost today, I believe the Holy Spirit of God, because his word is being preached, I believe the Holy Spirit of God is calling you right now. Come now. I, I Listen, I, the Holy Spirit of God is not telling you. He's not the one telling you to wait till later. Amen. He's saying now. The devil's still in that deceiving business. And one of the subtle tactics, one of the subtle tricks that he uses uh, to keep you lost today is that of procrastination. Hey, can I tell you, that's a, that's a pride. Amen. The Bible says uh, in, uh, let's see here, I, I, I might have got, my, got ahead of myself here. Uh, but we're not to, oh yeah, Proverbs 27.1 says, boast not thyself of tomorrow. Listen here, you, if, you're, if you're putting off salvation, if you're putting off uh, the Lord dealing and you're dealing with your heart about something, dear friend, you are in pride. You're pridefully thinking that God's going to give you another day. Listen, you don't, know, you don't know if God's going to give you another day. Nobody knows if God's going to give them another day. Amen? 
God says today. Satan's saying, no, tomorrow. I, uh, I enjoy some dangerous things in my life. There's, uh, as I get older, I, I've settled down a little bit. But there's some, there's some dangerous things I enjoy. Amen. There's something about, there's something about getting on a four-wheeler or a dirt bike or some sort of off-road vehicle and pinning the throttle to the, to the floor and uh, listening to that engine bounce off that, that rev limiter. And uh, can, is there any other, other uh, uh, adrenaline junkies out there? Can I get an amen or something yeah. here? All right. Listen, I get, get, I get a little excited about that kind of stuff. I got some videotapes of me jumping 100-foot tabletops back on the four-wheeler. And, and I was fat back then, too. You imagine how much dangerous that would have been if, uh, uh, that, uh, if, if I would have fell off there, amen, all that weight hitting the ground at once. Uh, but listen, I, I've always enjoyed those kind of things. I, I enjoy uh, some of them things. But there, listen, I would never want to take a chance with eternity. Sir. Amen. There's, a, there's, there's something about that, the, the, the physical thrill and parasailing and some fun stuff that we do. But I'll tell you, I don't. That's one thrill. Uh, that's one. That, that's, that's, that's some adrenaline I want nothing to do with. That's some chance that I want nothing to do with. Listen, I don't want to take a chance with my soul. I don't want to take a chance with my eternity. Listen, how terrifying it is to consider what awaits the one who, who procrastinates, the one who puts off salvation until it's too late. When I think of procrastination, I can't help but to think about Felix. He told the Apostle Paul there, he says, Go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season. I'll call for thee. Listen, as far as I know, maybe you could show me something in Scripture, but as far as I know, in the Word of God, that convenient time never came in Felix. I believe it's in hell today. Listen, I think of Agrippa. I can't help but to think about him as he in his procrastination. He said to the Apostle Paul, as well, he said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Is that close to believing? That close to having his sins forgiven, accepting Jesus Christ as the payment for his sin? That close. As far as I know, he too is in hell today. Pilate, he also fell for the subtlety of Satan there as he cried out in the New Testament, What shall I do then? With Jesus, which is called Christ. Pilate sealed his own fate. Cut himself off from, the, from, from God, who uh, he had the opportunity to trust his Savior, and he died in his sins. There's a lot of folks out there, men have lost their lives because they waited too long to, 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 to uh, seek uh, the help of doctors. They procrastinated in their uh, search for uh, some, some medical help over simple things sometimes. People have died because they didn't go to a doctor on time. There's been farmers out there that have, that have literally, they've, their crops were completely uh, devastated. They completely lost because they procrastinated just a little bit too long in, the, in, in either sowing or in reaping or in both. There's been businessmen that have lost all they had financially because they waited too long to take inventory of what was going on in their business. Business, men uh, and, 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 and women, uh, husbands and wives, they've lost their homes, they've lost their families because they hesitated to live right, because they put off living for the Lord, because they put off uh, 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 adhering to and, and settling their home within the boundaries of this precious word. Uh, they've lost their homes because they failed to show that love and the devotion uh, to their wives, uh, to their husbands, to their children. And listen, those are all terrible losses. Yet the greatest loss of all comes when that one puts off accepting Jesus until it's too late. Hey, can I tell you, once it's too late, there is no redos. I understand it's a, it's a, it's a popular myth. It's a popular falsehood. It's a popular lie, but it is nowhere in the scripture. But there is no purgatory. There is no in-between place. That is nowhere. You will not find that in, in any sort of way. I don't even know if you can find that by twisting Scripture. That's not in Scripture. There is no praying to the saints to get you to heaven. That is not scriptural. That is all man-made religion. That is a lie from the devil thinking that you can go ahead and put it off until it's too late. Friend, when you take your last breath in this world, when your heart stops beating in this world, your soul will enter into eternity. If you have not yet trusted Christ as Savior and that soul enters into eternity, there's only one other place that that soul will go other than with the Lord. And that is that place called hell. And at that moment, there is no redos. There is no, there is no returns. Amen. There's no relief. Thirdly, 
I'm going to skip that one just for sake of time. I had seven of them. I'm going to probably only put it down to like five here. So just, just, just pray with me that uh, I gave you the right ones and don't mess up here. Praise you, brother. Men are, men are dying in their sin today. They're dying in their sin today because they breathe away the Holy Spirit of God. That last one I was going to tell you, I'll just tell you what it is, and I won't go into it. People are dying in their sins because of sudden death. It kind of goes along with that last point. But men and women are dying in their sins today because they grieve away the Holy Spirit of God. This is the Word of God teaches, I, I think, pretty, plain, pretty, pretty uh, plainly that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. He's a person. The person of the Holy Spirit. It, it, he is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. <clears throat> Amen. The Holy person, the Holy Spirit, is the is the third person in the Trinity, the third person in the Godhead. He's a person. He can be he can be grieved, and he can be grieved so much that he no longer pleads and convicts of sin. The first passage that uh, comes to mind in in uh, Genesis chapter six and verse three, the Bible says, "My spirit shall not always strive with man." My spirit shall not always strive with man. Listen, if you're if you're one that is, if you're here or you're over the over the uh, internet, you're tuning in. Uh, if you're here and you have heard the gospel several times, you've heard uh, plainly taught from scriptures that we're sinners, we're separated from God, that Jesus died for our sin, and by faith we receive that salvation. If you've heard that gospel several times and you find yourself still with that procrastination crowd, this truth from the word of God ought to sober you right up. God says there can be a time, amen, there can come a time when his Holy Spirit of God Will, will, will not tolerate unbel your unbelief any longer, will not tolerate your procrastination any longer, will not tolerate your defiance any longer. God sets a deadline. One will only go so far and no farther. When we look at this age, we, we see there, the emphasis in this age, in this day of grace, the emphasis is on the work of the Holy Spirit of God. In this day, the Holy Spirit of God is not only our comforter, not only the one who leads and guides us, but he's also, uh, he, he's also the person who is, the, who is, who is the, the agent, the working agent in, the, in salvation. According to John chapter 6, 16, verses 7 through 8, the Bible tells us that not only is he a comforter, but he's also the one who will reprove the world of sin. He is the convictor of sin. He convicts us of our sin. He convicts us of our separation uh, between us and God. And he, and he convinces us of Jesus. And then once we accept Christ as Savior, it's the Holy Spirit of God that watches us Amen. and regenerates us. Jesus sent the blessed Holy Spirit of God to convict of sin. And right now, in this very day, and at this very moment, uh, he is in the world. He is testifying of Jesus. He is testifying of the finished work on the cross of Calvary. Uh, he is speaking to the hearts of the unsaved today. Uh, amen. And he is still saving souls all across this land today. The word of God will be being preached all across this land yesterday. Gospel tracts were handed out. And every day before that, throughout this land, the Holy Spirit of God was working in hearts that the message of the gospel was delivered to, convincing them that they need Jesus as their personal Savior, amen? He amen. is holy. He is sensitive, amen? He is personal, and he can be grieved away by a persistent rejection. The Holy Spirit of God won't, will, not, will not continue, will not always be striving with the rebellious and hard hearts. Amen? I, I, I got several people listed here. I'm not going to go through that. I'm going to go through Pharaoh. I'm going I'm to just talk about Pharaoh because we're running out of a little bit of time here. But listen, he, the Bible tells us he ceased to, he stopped striving with Pharaoh as he, as he pled with him, saying in Exodus chapter 10, verse 3, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Listen, he pled with Pharaoh to simply humble himself. And we read ten times in Exodus uh, that the, the sobering fact, uh, uh, really just a, a sad truth, that the, the Bible says the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Finally, God's preacher, Moses, he said, I will see thy face again no more. Exodus chapter 10, verse number 29. Think about that. Think about that. No more, no more uh, was, was God's man going to be praying 
for Pharaoh. No more was God's man going to be preaching the truth to Pharaoh. No more was God's man going to be, going to be weeping uh, for Pharaoh. No more. God had finished with Pharaoh. God was done with Pharaoh. He died in his sin. Many others we find uh, recorded uh, in, in the Bible, but I, I think about that fatal moment. I think about that that terrible moment, that fatal moment when, 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 for your, uh, when for your precious soul, when your precious soul becomes past that feeling of the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. When you no longer can sense his drawing. When you no longer can sense that conviction of your sin. Jesus, our wonderful Savior, he can save from adultery. He can save the murderer. He can save the, 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 the drunkard. He can save the, from profanity. But when the Holy Spirit of God no longer speaks, when the Holy Spirit of God, you've passed that deadline, and that he no longer convicts your heart of sin, the Father will no longer listen uh, to, the, to the loved ones who are praying for you because you've crossed that line. And listen, please, listen, I want you to, don't be deceived. God's patience does wear out. We see three times in Romans chapter 1 that the awful expression, God gave them up. God gave them up. History records a, a, just a sobering moment in the, in the life of that great Napoleon Bonaparte. It says in uh, a story I read, an uh, illustration I read, it, in the midst of, the, of a smoking battlefield, one of the soldiers came running to him crying out, We have won! We have won! It is said that as that great military genius looked out over the battlefields and saw that many of his soldiers that had been wounded and were dead, he said, one other such victory will cost me my kingdom. Listen, the Bible teaches individual soul liberty. I can't get you saved. You can't get me saved. You've got to really make a decision to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Amen. With the liberty that you, uh, with the liberty that God has given you, you may choose to turn down Jesus. You may, may choose to, to refuse the, uh, the Holy Spirit's conviction. You may refuse his mercy. You may refuse his grace. Uh, you may feel that you're winning the victory. You may feel uh, victory in that liberty uh, as, you're, as you're winning over those prayers and the tears of, of the heartfelt witnessing of God's people as they uh, desire to share Christ with you so that you trust Christ as Savior. But can I tell you, those that, that are continuing to reject the Holy Spirit's leadership, one day that victory will cost you your soul. Fifthly, men are dying in their sins. Men and women are dying in their sins but they become the work of Satan. Listen, I believe he desires to keep you condemned. We're already we're condemned already according to Scripture by our relation to that first man, Adam. He, he desires to keep you condemned in your sin. He wants you to spend eternity in a place called hell. And he uses all sorts of subtleties, all sorts of trickery, uh, all sorts of his earthly wisdom so that he can keep you from repenting, keep you blind to the truth, keep you from believing and being saved. He fought to keep the Savior from coming into this world, amen? That's how much he wanted to keep those uh, lost, keep those uh, of Adam's race lost in their sin. He deceived by promoting another gospel, amen? He has schemed, uh, he has deceived, he has blinded the eyes of, uh, of multitudes uh, to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the truth of that wonderful gospel of grace, unmerited favor, nothing we did, but all that he has done. From the moment that God drove him from the Garden of Eden, uh, and, and can I tell you, to this very day, uh, to this very moment, Satan uh, ha is active. Satan is, is actively working day and night. And no wonder the Bible tells us very plainly in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, to be sober and to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Listen, we, uh, we, we, uh, we understand that Satan has the power we need to admit that we need to admit we need to understand that he has the power to blind the unsaved. Uh, he has a, he has uh, abilities to keep them in dark, to hinder them from being saved. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, said in Second Corinthians chapter four, verses three and four, he says, "But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, talking about Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should." shine unto them. Satan has deceived the people that Jesus deceived the people that Jesus was preaching to that day in, 
John chapter number 80, he had so deceived them that Jesus told them and testified against them, you shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Jesus told them, you are of your father, the devil, later on there in, in John chapter 8, verse 44, he tells them, you're, ye are your, of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Listen, I don't understand. I don't understand why somebody with any sort of brains, I don't understand why somebody with any sort of intelligence would want to stay part of the devil's family or one of the devil's children. I don't understand that. Listen, he's a he's a horrible provider. Right? You, listen, you can't, you can't depend upon his word. He's the, the Bible tells us he's the father of all lies. You, you ever run into people you just can't depend upon? And there's some folks I completely ignore out of, my, out of my phone, out of my text messages, out of my calls, because all they ever do is lie. And I've just stopped depending on them. You can't depend upon him. His, his poison that he offers is always sugar-coated. It always looks good. Right? All the pleasures that he offers are only for a season. Listen, you young people, I want you to understand, all the garbage and all the wickedness in the world, it might look fun right now. All the drugs, the drinking, the smoking, all those different things that you see, all the, all the things that the pop culture portrays as being fun and awesome and cool and all those different things. I know you guys don't use all those words exactly the same way. Uh, they probably didn't use them in my day either, but when you get old, you just have to go nerd mode, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but, Listen, uh, the, uh, the, the world might, oh man, do this, try this, it's so awesome, it's so good. I want to tell you young people, I've been there, uh, I've done that, and I can promise you that those, <laughs> those things do not leave you with any sort of lasting pleasure, any sort of lasting joy. In fact, they leave you hurting, they leave you with scars. Time would not permit for me to tell you today, but uh, all of the scars and all that I deal with today, uh, mentally and physically, because of the wickedness of this world. But the devil said, oh, it'll be fun, Brother Bob. It'd be fun if all of your friends are doing it. Right? They don't, they, they don't work that, obviously. And, and your friends aren't going to probably come up to you and be that cliche. Say, but all of us are doing it. But they'll hint in that direction. And when you succumb to that, and when you fall into that, I want you to understand the poisons that the devil is offering you, those are sugar-coated. They'll taste okay for a minute until you get that layer of wickedness in your mouth. And then, you, then, then that taste is there, and it's stuck, and your body's de uh, de developed some dependence for that garbage and that wickedness, and it's going to break you, it's going to hurt you, those pleasures will be fun, but it'll only be for a season. At the other end of that thing, you're going to be hurt, and you're going to have scars that the world can't see, but that you deal with every single day when you wake up. He can't come, the devil can't comfort you when you're heartbroken. He can't. He's never dried a tear. He's never lifted a heavy burden. He, he doesn't. He doesn't offer any. He certainly doesn't offer any hope in in, in death uh, or any any hope in eternity. Listen, God. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter twenty, verse ten, He's going to cast him in the lake of fire, along with those that were deceived by Him. Two more, very quickly. I promise. Men are dying in their sins. Listen, men and women are dying in their sins today because of a lack of concern from the redeemed. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 38 says, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray, pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. Listen, we, I, I could park here for a long time, but I, I preach this all the time, and I'll probably preach it again next week. I don't know. But I wonder how many, how many more would trust the Lord. If you and I as God's people would be more faithful to get the message of the gospel to them. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what impact on eternity our laziness, our selfishness is having amongst those that are lost without Jesus Christ. Listen, I, I understand it's uncomfortable to give a gospel track. I understand it's uncomfortable to 
to tell somebody, to ask somebody if they died today, are they 100% sure they're going? I understand those things are uncomfortable. I understand sharing the gospel can sometimes be uncomfortable. Sometimes they just outright tell you to go fly a kite. Then they tell you, get out of here. Uh, go, go pound sand. Get out of my face. Get out of my, get out of my yard. Get away from my door. I understand that it's going to be uncomfortable, but I wonder how, how, what kind of an impact negatively you and I as believers are having on eternity because we are failing to deliver the gospel message to the lost and dying people. I hope that breaks your heart. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm not trying to hurt your face. It broke my heart. So I'm just, I, misery loves company, I suppose. And I just hope your heart's broken along with me on that. Lastly, step to seventh here. Men and women are dying in their sins today because of carnal Christianity. Kind of goes along with that last point. But Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Listen, men and women have to make their own decisions. We don't force anybody to make a decision for, for salvation. I understand that, and that's not what I'm... I'm not trying to promote that we make any decisions for anybody else. But the opposite of glorifying God because of our good works would be blaspheming God because of your carnality and godlessness while claiming to be a Christian. Amen? Listen, it, 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 I understand that we're in a, in a seeker-sensitive day. I understand that there's a lot of folks out there that they go, they, they pick their church not by sound doctrine, but by how it makes them feel. Does it, how much does it line up with the life I live world, world? And then I'm gonna, I'm, that's where I'm going to end up fitting in. That's where I'm going to end up going because I want to go where I can be entertained. If I'm going hey, to have to come for an hour out of, out of my Sunday, then, I, then you better believe I'm going to come to a place that I'm having fun. Now, I was there. He said, how in the world does he know that? I was there. I went to the same church for 40 years. I went there because they had some wonderful country western music. Right? I love, man, I loved it. But I mean, we slapped the music, Brother David. I was all kind of having fun. I'm telling you what. You heard that story. You heard that story, how that ended. Amen. Praise God. I ended up in a church that preached the gospel of Jesus Christ all 40 years. I've never heard, I've never heard the gospel clearly. All four years, I never had the opportunity to trust Christ as Savior. I, I, just, just a little while after going to the church to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, I heard the gospel I got born again. Hey, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Listen, we're in a day, folks, are, they're, 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 they're selfish. They don't make sacrifices to live for the Lord uh, because they, it's going to cost them too much or it's too hard. Separating from that is too hard. It's too difficult. Removing that from my life is too hard. It's too difficult. We use the excuse, oh, God's word is just a bunch of a do's and bunch of do's and don'ts. Listen, would you you know what? If, if, if we would be right with God, if we would grow in the Lord, we would stop being we would stop being Christians that are focused on the doing, and we would be Christians that would start being. Amen. When you when you when you start living for the Lord because you realize what He did for you on the cross of Calvary, you know all the all the do's and don'ts that those complain about, they don't bother you anymore. Isn't that crazy? In fact, you kind of get excited about doing them. Hey, Amen. I kind of get excited about being separated from the wickedness of the world. I kind of get excited about that. I kind of get excited about some of the results and the fruit of separating from the garbage and the filth of this world. Amen. Well, listen, there's a lot of folks out there that are looking at you, dear Christian, and they're going, hmm, you know, I could have that and not go to church because they're not seeing the light of Christ in you. I wonder how many of us are deterring or discouraging salvation because of our behavior, because of the way we live as Christians. Let me close. Men are dying in their sins today. Men and women are dying in their sins today because of unbelief, because of procrastination. Because of sudden death, because of grieving away the Holy Spirit of God, because of this work of Satan, because of the lack of concern from the redeemed, because because uh, uh, of carnal Christianity, men and women don't have to die in their sins. Though a little story here uh, is that we get uh, Lady Gwen certainly he went to the piano. There's is a little story I read about a little seven year old girl. She kind of strayed out of her house and. And uh, she had uh, and, and, uh, went into a, a beautiful flower garden there nearby uh, her home. 
And uh, there's a great man of God there, an old, old-time preacher, who's praying and he's meditating and he's spending some time with the Lord. When her mom found her, when your mom finally caught up with her daughter there, she was, she was, she was walking up and she, her daughter was walking up and down the garden hand in hand with this, with this old-time preacher. He was, he was quoting scripture. He was talking to the Lord. He was just having himself a time. And he just sitting there walking hand in hand with this young, with this young little girl up and down to this garden. Her mother was so embarrassed and, 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 and really kind of you know, feared that the, the child had disrupted this, this servant of God, this preacher of God. And she said, come, come into the house. Come, come in here quickly. You, listen, you, you've interrupted the preacher. And as that mother was scolding her, the little child responded, but mama, he reached out his hand to me. How wonderful, how wonderful the truth is that we're never, we're not bothering Jesus. Amen. Jesus reaches out his nail scarred hands to you and to I. He, he desires fellowship. He's the one knocking on the door for fellowship. Amen. He wants to have a relationship with you. God Almighty, the one who created the universe, died for your sins and wants to have fellowship with you. Don't that bless your heart today? God says in his word, speaking about Israel, in Romans chapter 10, verse 21, he says, But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Listen, I don't want any of you to be guilty of that same sin. I, I urge you by faith, place your trust in him. Be saved today. Go ahead and stand with me. Jesus said, You shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. I wonder if the Holy Spirit of God did some work today. I wonder if there'd be one here today that say, Pastor, the Holy Spirit of God told me today, worked on my heart today, showed me very clearly that I'm not saved. That I'm still in my sins. And if I died right now, I would die in my sins and I would not be able to go to where Jesus is. I wonder, with eyes closed and heads bowed, I wonder if there'd anybody be willing to testify to me honestly. And just say, Pastor, if I die today, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. I want you to pray for me. I, the Holy Spirit of God revealed to me today that I need to be saved. Is there anybody like that? Pastor Steve, pray for me. I'm not, I'm not saved. The Holy Spirit made that very clear today. I, if I die today, I'm going to die in my sins. If your hand, hand lifted up, you just put it up real quick and put it right back down. I just want to be able to pray for you. I don't need to hold out. I'm not going to call on you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I simply want to know the Holy Spirit of God was working on your heart so I can pray for you about that. Is there anybody like that? Pastor Steve, if I die today, I, I wouldn't go to heaven. Holy Spirit of God made that clear today. Anybody like that today? Is there anybody else that say, Pastor, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But I need, a better, I need to be a better soul winner. I need to be a better better witness of, of my faith. I need to share Christ more. I need, to be, I need to be more faithful in delivering the gospel. Please pray for me. Is anybody like that, Pastor Steve? I, I need to be a better soul winner. Thank you for those hands. Appreciate you being honest. We all, we all really have... Room to grow in the area of sharing Christ. Amen. Let's, let the Lord burden our hearts and break our hearts. Listen, this isn't just a, a fun little cute message, a Sunday sermonette and send you home and just enjoy. Listen, I'm just preaching the truth of the word of God. There's folks out there today, they will take their last breath, but no soul winner has ever got the gospel to them. They'll step into eternity without Jesus as their Savior and they'll spend eternity in hell. They will die in their sins. Where the Lord is, they cannot go. They need to get the gospel to them. Eyes closed, heads bowed. As Brady begins to pray, how's God working your heart today? Maybe you're a little worried about raising your hand in that area of salvation. Would you come to the old-fashioned altar and say, and, and just, just, just ask the Lord to be your savior today? When, when the apostle Paul testified to that jailer, he said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved." There's nothing fancy about it. There's, it's, it's not overcomplicated. We come under conviction of our sin. We know we need a Savior. And we say, here, Jesus, please be my Savior. I believe in you. I believe in, in what you did for me on the cross of Calvary. Once you've trusted Christ as Savior, you follow him in believer's baptism and you serve him in the local church. That's the New Testament pattern. That's the plan for, for New Testament saints. But it starts when you believe on Jesus Christ. Dear child of God, you're saved today, you're born again, your sins are washed away, you know without a shadow of a doubt, if you die today, you go to heaven, you're not going to die in your sins because they have been covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are settled and secure in Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for that. But God broke your heart about lost people. 
you come to an old altar and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I've been selfish. I have not made the necessary sacrifice. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't share the gospel at all or like I ought. I'm sorry, God, help me in this area of personal evangelism. Help me to share Christ more faithfully. Anybody like that today? I don't need a hand. I just see a pray that you're your seat or pray an old fashioned altar and say, God, I'm sorry. I was broken. I was broken over this. This message just broke my heart. And the thought of hell breaks my heart. And this day we are reminded in the craziness of our day that we are in the end times. You look around you just a little bit. You take your hand, head out of the sand a little bit. You see all the action, all the activities going on in the Middle East right now. Israel being bombarded by rockets. Everybody around the world attacking Israel, calling them the ones that fall in the instigators. That is all, that is all making way for the Antichrist. It's making way for the end times. It's making it. And listen, there is nothing left in Scripture that is holding God back from saying, sound the trumpet and bring my, bring my children home. It could be any moment. 